Hi, um, my name's Patricia Coffey. I'm head of chemistry at Jess Dubai for the last couple of years. Um, I'm also mom to four children, um, so I'm definitely kept busy. Um, my passion is teaching and learning, and over the last couple of years, I've been trying to embed a lot of um, work in the school with regards to the effective strategies for learning. And what we found over the last few years is that you know, dealing with it individually is just not working overall and that we need a whole school approach to um, those six effective strategies to learning in order for them to work and students to become um, effective at revision techniques. Um, so who needs to be involved? Now, this is fairly self-explanatory. Who needs to be involved? The whole community, okay? SLT, teachers, students, parents need to be involved. Um, and what we've also found is that you know, it's something that shouldn't be done for exam years only. It should be done from as early as year seven so that by the time they get to exam years, they're fully confident with, you know, retrieval practice, dual coding, etc. cetera. Um, so why is a whole school approach needed? Well, a whole school approach is needed. So um, teachers can push forward with the content they need to deliver, um, knowing that the students are already proficient and knowing how to revise. Because a lot of the time what will happen is... Um, you get kids up to year 11 GCSE years or IB and you're realizing that you know they're they're very bright students but when they put pen to paper it just doesn't work and when you delve in even further what you see is that uh, the students just don't know how to revise effectively and you're trying to input a little bit of that into your lessons as well and obviously it's taken away from you know your curriculum time so that's why it's really important that there's a whole school approach to it and um, also students will become proficient at knowing how to revise effectively from year seven okay again we shouldn't be running revision days um in gcse or ib because it's too late then as far as i'm concerned um you should be implementing it obviously primary school brilliant but implementing it as early as year seven so they know and they're not as stressed out then when they get to exam years because they know how to effectively do it and then the last thing is that parents can become confident in supporting their kids at home with revision now, we've built in what's called a common language um, in order for this to work. And all we mean by a common language is that everybody's using the same language with regards to revision. Um, you know, it's all over Twitter at the moment, retrieval practice, dual coding, but that's in the teacher world in Twitter. Students, not enough students know about it, not enough parents know about it. And so what we've aimed to do over the last year or two in Jess is um, get the parents more involved, get the students more involved, and obviously get the teachers all speaking the same language. All we mean by the common languages is that, you know, all our teachers are proficient with revision and implementing revision techniques. But one teacher might use a different word for retrieval practice and another teacher might use a different word for dual coding. And what we've done over the last kind of couple of years, since this has really um, exploded the learning to learn techniques, is made sure that the te all teachers are using those same terms, the students are made, make, uh, using those same terms, and also the parents are using those terms as well when they're talking to their kids at home about, you know, what homework do you have today? Um, and they're saying, you know, a lot of the time what happens um, and what we said with parents as well, you know, kids go home and they say, uh, a parent will ask them, oh, do you have any homework? And typical answer is, oh, no, I don't have any homework. I did it in school or or something like that. But, um, you know, what I've said to parents when they've come into the uh, workshops that we've run is, um, you know, that's the wrong question then to, to be asking them, do they have any homework? You know, the, the right questions to be asking are, what did you learn about today? That automatically is embedding the retrieval practice then into a student's day after they come out of the lesson um, or after they come out of school. Um, also, it means the students are less confused about knowing what retrieval practice is in English and what retrieval practice is in chemistry because I'm specifically saying this is what retrieval practice looks in chemistry. An English teacher is saying this is what retrieval practice looks in um, English or this is what dual coding looks like in English or this is what dual coding looks like in geography. So they're always getting the same language all the time, which is further strengthening their ability to revise effectively. Now, what needs to happen for this approach to be successful? Well, um, again, especially um, over the last two years at Jess, we've started to run some workshops now. Um, you know, you could, as I said, teachers will always implement it in their lessons. But what we found has been really successful is hands on workshops, especially for students and parents. So um, 
what we did, we started off with the parent workshops. A lot of parents are not aware of the advance in research behind revision. Um, a lot of people still think it's the same as when they were at school. You just get on with it. You know, there is no magic recipe when, in fact, there is a magic recipe now. Um, you know, you don't need to be doing hours and hours and hours of revision because it's not going to be successive. You don't need to be rewriting your notes. You don't need to be highlighting your notes. And so getting the parents on board at actually realizing all this research and showing them um you know, Ebbinghouse curve and showing them like when a child leaves the lesson after 24 hours, 80% of that um, information can be gone from their head. And um, so what we've done is we've brought parents in for workshops and um, it's been really successful. I mean, the last one we did pre-COVID was, you know, we had about 200 parents turn up to this um, workshop and you know they were so happy at the end of it saying i didn't realize it was like that now you know i'd be pushing my child to sit upstairs for a couple of hours at the weekend to try and do some study and what we're trying to get them on board to do is actually realize you know a half an hour on chemistry and then test yourself and then a half an hour on english and test yourself not doing hours and hours and hours of it and actually trying to get it the students to embed it um you know weekly so that they're not you know, staying up really late before exams and just trying to cram it all in there. And actually, you know, parents realizing that if you try and implement this with your kids at home, it's also going to be, you know, mean that kids are not going to get sick as much if their immune systems are go, uh, going down because they're spending so much time staying up late revising and also less stress. There's, you know, I have a, a daughter at GCSE year and, you know, there's definitely less stress when they're after doing that retrieval practice, when they're after doing that dual coding, when they're after doing that interleaving, and um, there is definitely less stress involved. After the workshop, then for the parents, we started doing workshop for the students. So the parents then were the people who signed their students up uh, or their children up for these workshops. Um, and what we did with these workshops is we got other teachers from other subjects um, on board. Um, we did hands on workshops and showed them what was a bad flashcard and what was a good flashcard. We also showed them what was a bad flashcard, say, in my subject, which is chemistry. And we also showed them what was a bad um, and good flashcard in English, because I understand my subject chemistry. And, you know, that would lend itself over maybe to, you know, me understanding how to do a flashcard in maths. But if you ask me how to do a flashcard for English, I wouldn't really have an idea how to do a flashcard for English and, or what was an effective flashcard. So also that's what we're doing. We're trying to get the teachers as well on board with the workshops with the students to show the students how to effectively do it in their subject. But we're not doing it during class time. So during class time, then they're getting, you know, the, the full uh, curriculum from the teacher already knowing how to implement these techniques. Um, so. Um, I suppose things have obviously changed now over the last couple of months and we have started to adapt our approach to this um, old school approach to revision. So um, what we're in the process of doing is, um, <clears throat> I think a lot of people are starting this now, is um, I'm about to start to do a parent podcast, which again will get the parents on board, explain all the research behind um, you know, revision techniques. Then we're going to start online ECAs for the students. We work via OneNote and Teams at school. So it'll be a live ECA after school where students can be on um, Teams with you. They can be asking, using the hands up uh, function on Teams and asking questions. And you can model how to do, um, you know, I have a document camera that I connect. I can model how to do those um, good flashcards and bad flashcards and ask them questions. You know, why is this a bad flashcard? Why isn't it working? You know, why is spending three hours not really good for you? Why is highlighting and rereading and rewriting not good at asking them those questions and getting involved? And then also we have a virtual uh, teaching and learning team where um, teachers can add um resources that they think are really useful up there um, and share good practice of for revision in their subjects. And again, a lot of the time, I mean, I made the um, the GCSE 30 day retrieval practice um, board for the kids for November. And I share that again next month. But I know a lot of other subjects have taken that on board as well and uh, changed it to suit their subject. And so, you know, sharing um, good resources virtually as well as the way to go because again you're not taking up anyone's time we just see the teaching and learning team has been updated by someone you go on and you have a look and it's there to download um 
that's pretty much it. Um, I probably spoke too fast there. Um, if anyone would like more information or support in setting up a um, whole school approach or revision in the school, I'd be happy to help or happy um, to answer any questions that anyone has. Um, short and sweet.